Welcome to the Weekly Digest, where we highlight the works of ministers of government as they push the administration's development agenda. First Lady of Guyana, Aria Ali, paid a visit to the maternity ward of the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation on Christmas morning to bring season's greetings, good wishes, and care packages to the mothers of Christmas babies in the maternal ward. The packages contained baby supplies and diapers. This is a season of caring and sharing, so we cannot forget our babies. We've been giving out a lot of hampers and a lot of, we did a lot of toy distributions during the course of the season, so we're here this morning. Mothers who had given birth prior to Christmas Day received care packages as well. Ranks of the Joint Services were on Wednesday engaged by the Ministry of Housing and Water's Central Housing and Planning Authority about housing-related matters. Ranks were pre-qualified for loans for home construction and those who were allocated house lots had the opportunity to apply for the cement and steel housing assistance. The event was hosted at Base Camp Ayangana, Georgetown, and was spearheaded by Minister of Housing and Water, Colin Kroll. This is in keeping with President Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali's recent commitment to the Joint Services. Members of the Disciplined Forces lauded government's initiative, which will allow the ranks to capitalize on the various opportunities. Housing and Water Minister Colin Kroll, during remarks, highlighted how important home ownership is for everyone. Okay. Minister Kroll also alluded to the various initiatives that were implemented to guarantee that people can obtain financing to construct or pay for their homes easily. This is how we operate as a government, and that is to ensure that we work with all possible institutions so that we can encourage each one of you to have your own home, to have your own environment for where when you are concentrating on protecting the state, you have an environment for your children, a secure environment for your family. And that is what we all strive to ensure, that we have betterment for ourselves and for our family. Additionally, the contract for the historic single window system was on Wednesday signed by the Central Housing and Planning Authority, CH&PA, and Global Services Inc. to the tune of some $202.9 million. The signing was done at the Ministry of Housing and Water's boardroom at Brigdam, Georgetown by CHNPA's Chief Executive Officer Sherwin Greaves and Global Services Contractor and Representative George Melville. Minister within the Housing and Water Ministry, Suzanne Rodrigues, outlined the cumbersome process that currently exists, reiterating the relief the single window system will bring to entrepreneurs. This is truly a transformational uh, project, initiative, a solution for the ease of doing business in Guyana. Now, for many years, you've heard uh, government speak about reducing bureaucracy, reducing the red tape, and making it easy for people to do business in Guyana. And this is a demonstration of that commitment. So this IT platform, followed by the legislation that, that will be passed and that will be made law, will allow for a single window for planning and building permits. There's a whole host of agencies that you have to go to basically track your application and you have to do this in person. Each, each agency you have to submit a different application uh, with different requirements. So this tremendously eases that uh, process of doing business where you will present your completed application at a single window. And that is what this uh, IT solution will facilitate. Housing and Water Minister Colin Kroll noted that the system and its accompanying legislation fosters transparency and accountability at the administrative level. He stated that the government's transformational agenda encompasses not only physical aspects, but the development of systems and policies that help us to move forward as a country. The implementation of the single window system forms part of the government's efforts to create a business-friendly environment and reduce the hassle of doing business. It is expected to be online by early July 2023. A hybrid system will be employed in the initial stages and the transition will gradually be made to a fully electronic system. 
Small and medium-sized loggers and sawmillers are set to benefit from improved access to finance with the establishment of the $900 million Forestry Revolving Fund. Through the Finance Ministry, the government and the Demerara Bank Limited on Thursday signed a Memorandum of Understanding for the establishment of the fund. The MOU fulfills a commitment made by President Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali during an engagement with forestry stakeholders back in October and seeks to promote value-added production within the forestry sector. Senior Minister within the Office of the President with Responsibility for Finance, Dr. Ashni Singh, stated that the accumulated funds will be deployed for affordable lending to persons operating in the forestry sector. When I say affordable lending, an agreement has been reached with Demrara Bank that the interest rate to be charged for lending out of this fund will be capped at 4%. And that obviously represents a highly concessional rate. He noted that the MOU represents the government's commitment to ensuring a diversified economy that is not dependent on one productive sector. Natural Resources Minister Vikram Bharat said that access to finance for small loggers and availability of concession were the primary issues coming out of a previous engagement. It is indeed pleasing for me as Minister of Natural Resources that we have reached this stage where we have Bargain, of course, with the intervention of His Excellency President Ali, bargain with the Amara Bank that we can now access finance for our small loggers, our sawmillers, and to ensure that the forestry sector is being restored and returned to its former glory days. Trainee nursing assistants are encouraged to provide care to patients with a professional and sympathetic attitude. They must remember why they pursued the profession, according to Health Minister Dr. Frank Anthony, as he was speaking at a launch of a nursing assistant program in Region 2 recently. These trainees, once certified, will provide direct care to patients in hospitals, nursing homes, and home care. They are a vital part of a larger care team that helps patients with basic needs including eating, bathing, grooming, mobility, and more. If we adopt that attitude, then you would see that things would change and we'll have a lot of people who would want to come to the institution because they recognize that when they come to the institution, they're getting somebody who can care for them. Right? And that is very, very important. Dr. Anthony believes the negative perception of the service in the health system can be transformed if there is the adoption of a proper attitude. As a result, he noted that the government through the health ministry is working aggressively to improve the overall healthcare system in Guyana. We can have the best improvements in the healthcare system. We can have the best buildings, best equipment, best everything. But if you got one person who got the wrong attitude and who are hoggish to people, then it turns everything else that the whole team has been doing. Friday marked the final day of trials for the case challenging the legality of the Natural Resources Fund Act in the High Court before Justice Navindra Singh. The ruling is set for March 17, 2023. This is according to Attorney General and Legal Affairs Minister Anil Nandlal. Uh, we made an application now to put our submissions in writing before the court. That we are to do um, sometime by the 10th of February. And then by the 20th of February, both sides are to reply to each other. He also expressed that the rule of law will prevail and that the opposition's efforts to garner vindication of their unlawful acts cannot be supported by law. I have every confidence that uh, justice will prevail and that the rule of law will win another battle because this case should never have been filed in the first place. The law will never countenance a party taking advantage of his own wrongdoing. The law is not structured that way. The parliamentary mace case stems from the opposition's challenging of the Natural Resources Fund, NRF Act, on the grounds that there was no consultation for the formulation of the Act and that the parliamentary mace must be in place for the law to be validly passed in the National Assembly. To this end, the Attorney General reiterated that the opposition had forfeited their right to consultations on the Act with their unlawful conduct. 
This brings us to the end of this edition of Weekly Digest. For these and other government-related stories, do log on to our website at dpi.gov.gy and our social media platforms as well. Goodbye.